Recently in my community tab here on YouTube, I did a poll. What would you guys like to see me review? Count Yorga or Dracula's Great Love? For a while, it was like pretty close. Ultimately, Count Yorga won, but I still had to come back and review Dracula's Great Love for you guys. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. This video is going to have some spoilers, but I think that it's necessary. And I will say, again, this is a low budget vampire exploitation movie, okay? You know, you know what you're gonna get. You know what's gonna happen. And two, knowing the plot of this movie is not going to take away from your viewing experience here, if you haven't seen it yet, because the plot isn't what makes this movie great. And finally, when I do talk about the actual ending, it's going to be very brief and I will warn you. So you can skip that part if you want. Let's get going. Count Dracula's Great Love was released in 1973. This is a Spanish vampire horror film directed by Javier Aguirre. Interestingly, it, it almost seemed like it was a sequel to something or that it was going to have a sequel after it, but it appears just to be a standalone film. I was able, thanks to Brian, to watch the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray uncensored as God intended. Its alternate titles include Cemetery Girls, which sounds so freaking cute, but it doesn't really quite fit. Um, and another alternate title is Grave Desires, which is a pretty cool title, but like Count Dracula's Great Love, I think, is very descriptive of what you're gonna get. The film stars, of course, Paul Nashi as Dr. Wendell Marlowe, AKA, Count Dracula. It stars Ide Politoff as Karen. Here is your synopsis. When their carriage wrecks in the Romanian forest, a group of five seeks refuge in an old castle, the only structure in the area. The castle was rumored to be a cursed sanatorium, and before that, the actual dwelling of Count Dracula. The group's host, a Dr. Wendell Marlowe, tells them that it will be several days before help will be able to come. Soon the group comes to realize the dangers lurking within their temporary sanctuary. Before we really get into the content of this review, I do want to lay it out there that I love this movie and it's, it's terrible. This is a funny movie to watch. This is a fun hilarious so bad it's good like this is going this is a movie to make fun of for real so we first start off uh, with these movers bringing a crate into the castle uh, presumably before the doctor has moved in and they both get slaughtered one of them gets an axe to the face and then he gets thrown down the stairs and while the opening credits roll, they loop the man falling down the stairs in slow motion over and over and over. I don't know why, it's just funny. Then we cut to a four horse carriage. Is the word carriage or coach? I don't know. I feel like I'm going to say carriage. So this carriage being drawn by four horses and inside of the carriage is our five characters. The four girls and the guy. And the man, Emery, is mansplaining to them. I'm just kidding. He's telling the ladies that this castle they're passing by was supposedly Count Dracula's. So he's like telling all the urban legends around the place. Okay, let's take a minute for these characters and actors. So of course we have Ide Politoff as Karen. And she is playing like the virginal character, which she does a lot, I think, because she has this like cute, innocent face. But I have seen her in in Terabang, The Slave, and Queens of Evil. I'm just a big fan of her. She doesn't like have the most expressive face, though most of the time I think that works with the characters that she's playing. Rosanna Yanni plays Senta. I recently saw her in Eye of the Hurricane. Her character is kind of like the slutty character. You can love to hate her. 
character. And she definitely has the worst voice actor of this whole, no, maybe not. She has a, a horrible voice actor. Her voice is real bad. It's real bad. Mirta Miller as Elka, it's nice to see her. She's very beautiful um, and, and she looks great in this movie. We of course know her from Eyeball. I also have seen her in Vengeance of the Zombies. She's awesome. Doesn't really have a lot of lines in this movie, but she's there and she's pretty. We have an Ingrid Garbo as Marlene and I don't think I've seen Ingrid in any movies. If you were to picture in your mind what someone named Ingrid would look like, I mean she's the perfect example. Oh yeah, apparently she was in Murder Mansion but I don't remember. And then Victor Barrera is in other movies with Nashi, like Horror Rises from the Tomb, Into the Zombies. Um, he's great, I like him and his character is doesn't really do much. Okay, and of course Paul Nashi has been in 108 films and apparently I've only seen six of them but he's I mean he's all right yeah he seems fine um I think he works as Dracula he can pull it off he has like a nice like dark complexion and he he's not the most imposing figure but I think it works he has a nice voice in this film as well but those that's our cast of characters but the thing is, none of these characters have very much depth and there's just not any development. Again, this is not why we're here, okay? You do not have to be smart or even sober or anything to enjoy and receive this movie as it should be received. Now I wanna talk about the immediate problems with this film because yes, there are immediately noticeable problems. It's very attention grabbing and very hilarious. The vibe of this film is really weird. It feels incredibly cheap, but also kind of feels like something you might see on PBS. This is a pretty poor attempt at being a period piece. The outfits are very brightly colored, very fun. I mean, I love the costumes, but they're also like very much giving costume shop. And yes, again, this is supposed to be a period piece, but the integrity of that is not upheld. Like it is not historically accurate or like, you know, nothing about it is really properly historical. Um, but I kind of like that because it just, it doesn't feel very stuffy. It's just like a bit looser and more fun. Some of the biggest problems with this film and my favorite problems with this film are the, the translation. The, the terrible dub. This may be one of the worst dubs I've seen so far. And just the atrocious voice acting. The dub is very awkward and strange and a lot of times it just does not fit. The words that they choose to use and the way their sentences come out, it's like nobody talks like that. And it's, the execution is just so awkward, but it's so funny. Oh gosh. And just like the writing in general, like the dialogue in general, like take a, take a shot every time someone says, I'm scared, you won't be okay. I have to give special recognition to the carriage driver. Um, he has a Texas accent, inexplicably. Or as Brian said in his review, he sounds like a Montana rancher. I guess I, I would say a Texas cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, so instantly, like, you can tell th the clumsiness and the awkwardness of this film, but, like, it won me over real quick. I was like, okay, I, I love it. I want to talk about the story a little bit, and the best way to give you a glimpse of what we're working with here is for me to just continue to describe to you this um, opening scene, or the second scene, I guess, where the carriage is traveling through the woods. A wheel fl falls off and it goes flying, so they uh, have to pull over. And so a couple of these very formally dressed people go through a stroll in the woods to look for the wheel, but they're like not looking for it. They're clearly not looking for it. They're just on a stroll. And meanwhile, the other three hang back with the Texas carriage driver and he starts messing with the horses. 
and all of a sudden there's only two horses and not four. But he starts messing with the horses for some reason, and one of them just very silently clocks him in the head, and then he just dies instantly. He's just dead. And all the, the girls are like, oh man, he's dead. What are we gonna do now? And then somehow the two horses untie themselves and, and run away. And that's our setup. Which brings me to the setting. So yes, this group is fully stranded and this is a very remote area and they have no choice but to go to the castle. And it's, I think it's gonna be storming soon. So they have to go to this castle and hope that the doctor they've heard about has moved in. And they knock on the door and boom, he's right there on the other side of the door. I thought this man was the help. The fact that he was just like right there open it up but no th it, that's the doctor and he welcomes them in and this is this is a great setting like i love this kind of story where a group is stranded they have to like stay the night at a stranger's house always love that i love the remoteness that they describe that like they're they are out there okay and the fact that this is a period piece means that like travel isn't so easy communication isn't so easy and i do like that coming into play with this being a period piece the nature here is really beautiful like the forest is beautiful the castle is beautiful and it really the grounds of the castle really effectively look like they're in ruins like he the doctor has moved there to renovate the area yeah it just it all looks really good the vampires that i have yet to speak about the vampires look really good the blood looks good it is a really nice looking movie and as for the elements we get here this movie serves candelabras howling wolves forests nighttime fog full moons thunderstorms lightning flashes, cobwebs, folklore, and of course vampires. <laughs> As for the sleaze and the gore, I think they are crucial elements to this movie. Um, okay, and like compared to Count Yorga, this movie definitely delivers a lot more. It fulfills the expectations that you would have in terms of like sleaze and gore that you would want from a film like this, and it definitely helps the film to not feel like a PBS special and to not feel so juvenile because it is so clumsy that it does feel kind of childish. But the sleaze and the blood, the blood looks really good, help kind of remind you that, oh, you're watching a grown up movie. <laughs> the axe in the face at the beginning was really good. And we also get a knife through the neck at one point, which looked really cool and it was disturbing. Just to reveal a little bit more about the story, um, the movers that I mentioned at the beginning of the movie, one of them got killed and one of them's a vampire. So for some reason Dracula is just letting this vampire just live in his house and wander around and he's kind of like rabid. Like he doesn't seem like he's all there. But even though Dracula has welcomed these five guests into his house, he still lets this random vampire wander around. It's, I don't know, it's weird. He is the one that starts the spread of the affliction. So naturally, five guests come to save Dracula. You can assume that some of them are gonna start getting turned into vampires, which is what happens. So let's talk about the look, the lore, and the locomotion of these vampires. You definitely see that they have the ability to just sort of like stun and lure their prey so there's never like much of a struggle kind of like with what i talked about in count yorga and these low budget vampire movies it's hard to give an effective entrance you know so what i am seeing with a lot of these movies that nashi is in is just the slow-mo the slow motion walk so we get a lot of this these like dreamy slow-mo entrances from these vampires they're they're doing the like stalking down the hallway kind of thing but it looks nice oh yeah lots of lots of uh, vampires in nightgowns we love it the lore is a little unclear i mean obviously they they adhere to the whole like you gotta 
sleep during the day and come out at night and all that, but I'm not sure how he stays alive. Like, can he drink animal blood or is he always hunting people? I don't know. That's never really explored. I would be remiss if I did not mention this brief moment where two of our vampire girls jump from the ground up to the second floor of a home. And when they do it, they get a sound effect that's like, it, <laughs> I'm like, did that really just happen? There is a scene in this movie. We do like a, a jump cut and Dracula is standing there all of a sudden, you know, just to show he had just popped into the room. But he is standing there with his mouth hanging open, I suppose, to show that he has the teeth. But it's just this derp face and he's just standing there like this. <laughs> My husband and I both lost it. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna start like getting into some spoiler territory. So if you don't wanna see this, please skip to the next little chapter in your little scrubber bar thing or go do this timestamp. So it, in this movie, basically Dracula, he has to get like a virgin to fall in love with him and then he has to take her blood and mix it with another virgin's blood and then put that blood on his daughter's corpse and then that's gonna bring his daughter back to life. Okay, but he has actually fallen in love with the virgin played by Ida. And this, he's a pretty interesting character to consider because he seems like a pretty nice guy because he's like a reincarnation of Dracula. So I guess he's like kind of got part of his human personality, but he's also got his like Draculaic destiny. So it's interesting because he seems like a nice guy, but he knows like there's nothing he can really do to stop this spread of the vampirism. And it's hard, it's hard to tell what his intentions are. But then we do see that he loves Karen so much that he's willing to just say like, forget about my daughter. Let's just run off together. Let's be in love. So the ending of this movie is really funny because they've gone through all this stuff and Dracula is facing Karen and he's like, will you be my girlfriend? And she's like, I can't. And then he just immediately goes <laughs> and stabs himself. Like he doesn't, he doesn't try to convince her. He doesn't like take a moment to go like, oh, okay. Like he just goes <laughs> instantly. It's so weird. It is so weird. It's very impulsive, sir. Like, you don't have to react so quickly. My camera's gonna die soon, so let's wrap this up. This movie is just like, it's very atmospheric, very Halloween-y, spooky, just an awesome vampire time. It's really, really cozy. It's goofy, it's all over the place. The plot isn't really that sensical, and you know all the other problems which I have stated with basically with the delivery, It's, but it's so fun. It's got colors. It's got so many colors. It's got pretty girls. It's got a beautiful setting and this is lovable clumsiness. Again, this is definitely one of those so bad it's good kind of movies. I don't know too many vampire movies so far, but this is definitely on up there. It was a great time. <laughs> so thanks again, Brian, for making this video possible. You all let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching and ciao for now.